Today's video is all about Kegel exercises for men. So what are Kegels? Kegels are an exercise for your pelvic floor for men or women where we contract the pelvic floor to help all sorts of sexual health issues and also incontinence for men. Now, Kegels are an exercise that you do with your pelvic floor muscles. You contract your pelvic floor, and we're gonna look at that today in this, today's video, but the benefits are numerous. It helps erectile dysfunction, it helps you stay longer, it helps you have a better ejaculation, a better orgasm for men. If you have incontinence issues where you leak a little bit of urine when you exercise or lift weights or do deadlifting even, this will help that. If you have fecal incontinence where accidentally you defecate a little bit when you cough or sneeze or you think you're letting out gas, but a little feces comes out, this can help that too. Or if you're someone that had problems with the prostate, you have benign prostatic hypertrophy, BPH, or prostate cancer, or prostate surgery, or prostatitis, which is inflammation of the prostate gland, this will help you too because people with those type of prostate issues often come into the area where they now finally have a type of erectile dysfunction having to do with prostate issues. This is also for you too. But all men, whether they're 20 years old or 80 years old, would benefit from strengthening that pelvic floor because just like my muscles and my bicep will lose strength if I don't tra train them, our pelvic floor muscles, which are hard to find, will lose their tone, become more flaccid, and give us all sorts of problems throughout every decade of life as a man. Today, we're gonna look at that. For men, a lot of you guys have never done a Kegel, so you might not be familiar with working your pelvic floor, but the first thing I want you to visualize is that you're standing up, urinating, and you try to stop the flow of your urine midstream, snapping it off midstream. That muscle, and, and visualize doing that right now. While you're watching this, picture what it would take, like do it. Pull your, pull the shaft of your penis in, squeeze down and cut off the urine. You just did a Kegel. Maybe not the best one, we're gonna improve upon it throughout this video because the technique and this kind of beginner's guide to doing a better Kegel will take you through how to really become an expert and a master at the Kegel. But for now, you could probably picture that. And that's the muscle, that's the pelvic floor, that's a Kegel, you just did one. But now that we have that, let's add to it and build a real Kegel exercise. Okay, so this is where we're gonna start. Where do you stand? Well, some people can start standing if you want. Um, I've often done these in the shower. I take a shower every morning before work. That's my time to shower. You can do it right in the shower. And you have your feet shoulder width apart. You can play with the tilt of your pelvis. I find my pelvis has to squeeze up and in a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. You look for it. Now, I'm not recommending that you urinate in the shower, but you could find it right in the shower while you're there. Now, another good place is to be seated. And you can see videos of people lying on their side with a pillow between their knees. That's good. You can lie on your back, which I don't recommend, especially for men. You really don't have a way to get in touch with the pelvic floor lying on your back. You're in too much of a passive position. So lying on your side, you could squeeze that pillow between your knees. Again, not my favorite position. You'll see videos with this. My favorite is to either, like I said, in the shower just to find it. But if you're gonna do it on a regular basis, I want you to sit tall in a chair like I'm doing now. And the first thing I want you to do is forget about cutting off the urine midstream. The first thing I want you to do right now is shorten the shaft of your penis. So what would it take for you to pull that in? So you're pulling your shaft of your penis. I'm doing it right with you as we, as we do this together. So you should be doing it too. And I feel the muscles in the front of my pelvis surrounding the shaft of my penis contract. And I literally feel my penis shorten up and towards my pelvis. Now, I really encourage when I'm teaching my patients to find this, I encourage them to actually touch their penis. So you might be doing this ideally naked. Uh, you're sitting in a chair, hopefully not at the office, and you reach around and you hold the shaft of your penis and as you contract, you feel it tug in. Another place is you can reach under your scrotum 
and there's a patch of skin, the perineum, between the, the base of your scrotum and the beginning of your anus. And that's another place I'm gonna have you put a light finger pressure, enough pressure that if there was a grape on the table, you could squeeze down on that grape without breaking the skin of the grape, without exploding the grape. So you're gonna put enough pressure on it to feel it. And that's a good palpation or touching pressure when you're on your perineum feeling for that contraction. And it almost feels like it's pushing out against your finger as you pull that in. So part two, part one is pulling the shaft in. Part two is squeezing your anus tight without flexing your butt cheeks. So we wanna get that tight contraction of the, uh, of the ring of the anus, squeezing hard, but not so much that our glutes lift us up in the chair. Because if I contract my glutes, it makes me rise up and down. But I'm not really hitting the, the, the Kegel exercise or the pelvic floor. So we're gonna squeeze the anus as part two. You squeeze it. Now some people describe it as, it's the same type of squeeze that if you feel like you might be letting out a big gas release, like a fart, and you wanna cut it off, or you're in public place where you don't feel it's a good idea to let it out right then, you could squeeze that hard and keep the gas inside of you. That would also be a correct squeeze. So let's put the two together right now. We're gonna shorten the penis, tighten the anal sphincter, and now what we add to it is we pull it up and into the body and really visualize this because that'll help you. So I'm pulling the shaft of my penis in, I'm squeezing my anus ring and pulling it up and in. And by sitting upright, I even kind of fake it till I make it, which is I pull my stomach in, like I'm vacuuming out my stomach like Arnold Schwarzenegger used to do in his old you know, bodybuilding uh, videos or even Frank Zane did it better, I think, had that vacuum the old bodybuilders would do that. So I vacuum up my belly, pull up my anus into my body, visualize it, because you can do it, and shorten my penis at the same time. You can also add the sensation of cutting off your urine mid-flow. So that's another piece. And try to do all that at once. Squeeze really hard and pull up really hard inside your body. Almost like you're telescoping your anus up into your body and hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, let it all relax. And now we add breathing to it. So that's the final step. So we breathe in and exhale. And this time breathe in and contract and pull up, get the, the gut engaged, Squeeze, pull the shaft of your penis in, cut off the urine mid-flow, don't let it go, don't let it go, squeeze, and relax. Let's do a third one together. And on the inhale, pull it all in, pull it all up, pull it into your belly, pull it up even higher, pull it up into your chest, Squeeze hard and let it go. And notice that the squeezing is what's the most important thing. This is not like a quick, rapid contractions where you're going pop, 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 pop. That's not what we want. We want you to squeeze and hold and then release. And try to hold it for six seconds or 10 seconds. Squeeze, 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 squeeze and relax. It would, better, it would be better to do less of them, but with squeezing with all your focus than just to do a bunch of half decent rapid ones. Now, how many should you do? I think you should go for a total of 30. Now, let's say you're not there because you've had prostate issues or you feel very weak in your pelvic floor, then just put that as a goal. So maybe the first day you do three good ones and then soon you do three good ones, rest, and do three more, and then do three more later in the day, so you've done a total of nine. And then you work up to five, five, and five, and then eventually 10, 10, and 10. And you gotta keep these going. You should do them five days a week, maybe seven days a week. But the benefit is that you're gonna start to get 
better control. It's better for anal tone. It's better for erections. It's better for staying power during sex. It's better for pushing out an ejaculation. And you're gonna get a stronger thrust and a stronger ejaculation push when the time comes for that. Now here's something interesting to note. The real expertise in this is having a strong pelvic floor, but also knowing when to relax. So if your pelvic floor is tight all the time and you can't find a place to relax, it'll be very hard to have an orgasm. So what you do wanna do is also have the ability to breathe and let it go. So if you're in the middle of sex and you're all hyper about it and you're pushing hard and pushing hard and pushing hard and you feel like you can't ejaculate because you're just too wound up and too tight, now is the time to let your pelvic floor drop. And this is important. So when you're doing the exercise, learn the contraction and the drop. You pull it tight like a trampoline and then let it go like a hammock. Trampoline, hammock. So let's do it one more time. You pull it tight, pull it up, squeeze everything up and in and hold. And as we exhale, let it really drop. Let it go soft. Let it get flaccid. Because sometimes in the middle of sex, you need to know, you have to have control of both. And if you find yourself too hyper and pushing too hard, find that drop. And it usually will kick you into having the payoff you're looking for. So think about the pelvic floor. What if you were able to do 30 a day? What if you are able to do 100 a day? How long would it take to really build your pelvic floor? It's gonna take probably four to six weeks to see a big difference. Now, if you work even harder than that, maybe you can shorten it to two to three weeks. But some people might find if they really have weakness in their pelvic floor, it could take them four to six months. We got a new machine in the office, and if you're in the New York City area or you can make a trip to New York uh, to see friends and relatives or sightsee and you wanna visit our office, we have a machine that will give you 13,000 kegels in 28 minutes. I know that's a mind blowing number, but that's exactly the number that it does. So we, you sit on this fully clothed and it starts to perform super maximum kegels on your pelvic floor, whether you know it or not. You don't even have to do this technique. It's just doing it for you. And super maximum means, let's say you could do a kegel like an eight, nine or a 10 on your best squeeze ever. What if we could three X that? What if it could give you a better than a human squeeze of a kegel and then do 13,000 of them in 28 minutes? And what if you weren't sore the next day? You'll feel like the next day you'll feel a little firmness and pulsing and, and excitement down there, but it won't be so fatigued like you just did heavy squats at the gym and you can't move. But in a very short time, we recommend six treatments you can see a change in your pelvic floor in six treatments. A change that will affect your orgasms, a change that will affect urinary incontinence, a change that will support your prostate and uh, pelvic floor structure after any type of prostate issues. Come by, if you even want to just try it for free for five minutes, mention YouTube and I'll let you try it for free for five minutes. We have special discounts for people that find us through YouTube. I'm Dr. Doug, I'm here to help you look good naked, but better than that, I'm here to help you feel good when you're naked with whatever goals you have.